Okay, this is a um, recording on the um, session on uh, flow measurement and control. Um, normally about 35 minutes, but I'm going to try and do it in about uh, 5 to 10 minutes. So here we go. Flow measurement and control. Um, Steve Kai, I'm the Dean of Engineering at uh, Engineering Institute of Technology. Um, we run these sessions regularly every month, um, so please grab the session. Um, what I'm going to be doing, let me just pick a nice bright color. Uh, color here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, is giving you a background to flow measurement. I just briefly want to conclude by talking about flow control. And then uh, another set of slides. Please ask Alison Gray for them. Should have them. Uh, they will actually uh, deal with abnormal conditions for orifice plates. It's quite an interesting paper which um, we've got hold of, um, courtesy of the presenter. He's let us uh, present it. A uh, very supportive guy uh, from Devon Energy in the States. A uh, very good paper, and I thought that would be a nice one to run, so I'll give you that later. So, first of all, background to flow measurement. Um, everyone here is probably familiar with orifice plates. And um, this presentation, by the way, uh, I've drawn quite a bit of inspiration from Dr. Jesse Yoda, who's probably a president of Flow Research, is probably one of the gurus in flow technologies. He distills it into very simple common sense English, which is fantastic. So uh, orifice plates, um, you've all had lots of meetings with over the years. And um, the, uh, in essence, um, They've been around since the 1890s, actually. Um, uh, let's see, 1887 was, um, and in fact, um, been around a long time. Um, the 1896, actually, first patents on orifice flow meters. So essentially what you do is just have a differential pressure transmitter, and you look at the drop in pressure across a plate, and of course, bingo, you measure the drop in pressure, and um, as you know from your high school physics, that gives you the uh, flow rate. So there's a relationship between the flow rate and the square root of the drop in pressure. So the uh, advantages are very low cost, ease of installation, very well understood, and it's widely um, uh, standardized, so lots of industry approvals. Um, but low initial cost doesn't mean total cost of ownership will be lower, it probably will be higher. Problems with orifice plates, pressure drop, so you lose energy, uh, your plate can be knocked out of position and um, it's not as accurate and efforts aren't going into technology improvements with orifice plates and there's a limited rangeability. Um, so really not um, as uh, favorite and the other little problem occasionally is sometimes you see it installed backwards. Yeah, I know you'd probably be a bit surprised to hear that, but that's um, happened in the past. So what are the other technologies? The new technologies where everyone's investing in time at the moment, particularly Coriolis and ultrasonic. Lots of effort going into those two uh, technologies. So Coriolis is quite simple. Um, in some respects, difficult to sort of grasp when you look at the diagrams, but basically you've got two vibrating tubes. The fluid accelerates through the tubes, and which reaches the point of maximum vibration, and then uh, when it, it decelerates, the fluid decelerates as it leaves the point of maximum vibration. And you have a twisting motion in the tubes, and the degree of twisting is proportional to the fluid's mass flow. So the advantages are extremely high accuracy, um, you can handle sanitary applications. Anything smaller than two inches or let's be metric, 50 millimeters, no problems, very high reliability. And uh, it can be used for custody transfer for oil and gas. Disadvantages, unfortunately expensive. Um, and if you go beyond 100 millimeters, four inches, it becomes a bit more expensive and there's a pressure drop for bent tubes. So typical guys that produce this are Emerson, Micromotion, Hendrickson Hauser, Crone, and G Measurement. The other one which is always fascinating is a good old magnetic flow uh, meter. 
um, use wire coils on outside of the pipe, two coils. You put a voltage to the coils, generate a magnetic field, and the magnetic field uh, impacts on the conductive liquid going through the pipe, and you have two more probes which detect the voltage um, uh, across those probes, those electrodes on either side of the pipe, and that voltage you will then work out the flow rate. Advantages, doesn't block anything because there's no plate or anything in it. Very high accuracy, no pressure drop because you've got no obstruction in the pipe. Good at measuring water and other liquids. And of course, um, you can have linings for measuring sanitary and other types of liquids. Disadvantages, forget about gas or steam, it's not going to measure that. Petroleum liquids, no go because there's no conductivity. And um, you can get a problem with coating on your electrodes, which means they need to be maintained. What are the other ones? The other ones are ultrasonic, which is one of my favorites. I did a thesis on that many years ago. Come with a lot of research. It was on um, cross-correlation flow measurement, where you could actually profile the pipe, but it wasn't very reliable. So the typical flow meter ultrasonic technology they use today is called transit time, which basically you send an ultrasonic signal across the pipe at an angle, measure the time it takes for the signal to travel from one side to the other, and when your signal is traveling with the flow in the pipe, you go a little bit faster. So you look at how long it takes the signal to cross the pipe in one direction. And then you look at the time for it coming back, and you work out your flow rate from that difference between the times. It's proportional to the flow rate, quite simple. Advantages, very high accuracy, no pressure drop because you've got no obstruction, non-intrusive and approved for custody transfer of gas and liquids. Um, biggest problems are cost, clean fluids, and it's a little bit of problems with swirl. So the kind of guys that promote this are Siemens, GE Measurement, Emerson Daniel, and Elster. The other two are Vortex. Vortex is uh, based around the principle of the von Kármán principle. Um, or von Kármán effect, where your flow generates vortices when going past a bluff body, like a block goes past, and the flow velocity is proportional to the frequency of the vortices. So a bluff body is just a piece of material with a broad flat front at right angles to the flow, so it's a little bit of an obstruction. Advantages, medium to high accuracy, medium cost, uh, excels in measuring steam, very versatile, liquid gas, steam, you name it, no worries at all. Um, and then the other one, the other disadvantage is probably uh, well, it's a body in the middle of a stream of liquid, so it could be knocked out of position. Vibration can impact on the accuracy, so I think of vibration in a big plant. Uh, it's not as widely accepted, so you don't get industry approvals across, and high accuracy is a little bit um, missing. The last one is thermal, which is probably not of much interest to anyone here, but I'll just quickly talk about it. Um, thermal developed in the 60s. I did a bit of work with thermal flow meters with um, medical applications. Um, and there, uh, what you're doing is you're looking at a um, heat into the flow stream, and basically what you're trying to look at is when you're heating up an element in the flow stream, how much heat dissipates. And you can, from that heat dissipation, you can then work out the um, flow rate. Obviously, the higher the flow rate, the more the heat dissipation. So there's two types of methods, constant temperature, and the other one is constant current method. Advantages are you can ha handle large line sizes. It's very good at gas flow, and it's reasonably priced. Disadvantages are limited accuracy, and of course, you've got to specify the gas being measured. And um, you can't use it with liquids as easily, and certainly not for steam. So there we go. Quick summary of, in a few minutes, the different technologies. Any questions? Um, if I can summarize, um, basically, uh, the technology is moving towards the new high techo things. So basically, Coriolis and Ultrasonic are the name of the game, the favorite boys and girls. Coriolis is very good. 
sometimes a bit complicated to understand, but very good, very uh, especially for liquid measurement with petroleum. And obviously, massive growth of demand for energy means gas and oil flow measurement will be one of the premier areas. One final comment with the control of flow. Uh, you always hear about P, I, and D. Well, essentially, the major ways of controlling are proportional integral control. Derivative control isn't used much with uh, flow control because you don't have much lag in the uh, control action. Okay, that's about it from me, um, Steve Mackay at uh, Engineering Institute of Technology, IDC Technologies. If you have any questions, drop a note to me at uh, IDC or EIT, and I'll be delighted to respond to you. And once again, thanks, Jesse Goda, for um, giving me your um, suggested um, um, topics here. It's quite a uh, very well put together paper. Thank you very much.